Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon guys. Today I'm here at uh, another uh, historical site. Basically these are two sites. On one side is the tomb of uh, Nadra Banu Begum and on the other side is the tomb of Sufi saint Islamic scholar Hazami Amir Ahmedullah. Right? So we are going to start with Nadra Banu Begum who is a wife of uh, Mughal crown prince Dara Shiko and daughter of uh, Parvez Mirza. She was born on 14 March 1618 and she died on 6 June 1659 in Blochistan. And as per her desire, her, uh, her wish, she was buried over here. Something that made me surprised about her life, that uh, her life is a tale of triumph and glory, heartbreak and misery, courage and loyalty. She was an embodiment of the idol wife and conjurer. Nadra Pano became belonged to the Shah Jahan era. And she was a devotee of famous Sufi saint Hazrat Mir Rah Rah Rahmatullah Alai as well. Nadra was adored, adored by Prince Dara Shukur. His love for her was more enduring than the love of Shah Jaha for Mumtaz. Unlike his father and other Mughals, he did not marry again after contracting marriage with Nadra. They had seven children of which four died in the infancy. After the death of Shah Jaha's wife, I was so much depressed and, and, uh, and completely video from court life. His daughter uh, Jahara Begum arranged her brother's wedding with Nada Begum in 1633 to put an end to mourning, mourning of uh, Shah Jahan. The marriage was celebrated with a great pomp and circumstance, with paintings of the celebration still surviving of the event. Dara Shiko fell in love, de deeply fell in love with his wife and never married again. It is said that even Jahara Begum was very close to Nada Begum by virtue of Nada Begum bond with Dara Shiko. Both of them were patrons of the arts, culture and were devout followers of Hazrat Mia Mir Rahmatullahi. Dara Shiko had been warned by Miami that waging war against Aurangzeb, his brother, Aurangzeb was the brother of uh, Dara Shiko, would have consequences for him. But Dara Shiko ignored the warning. He ignored it. Water he did not took his word seriously. That were, uh, the war that followed led to Dara Shiko's defeat while escaping to Iran with his wife and children. Nada Begum come uh, to no more. Walking the sentry near the Bolum Pass. The sentry is name of a disease. Another version of the story is that she committed suicide by drinking poison, but scholars have rejected this as a myth. Her last wish was to be buried in Hindustan, and a heartbroken Dara Shikha, not thinking of the consequences, sent her body to Lahore with a few of his most trusted soldiers. Sometime after this, Dara Shiko was also caught and executed by his brother, Aurangzeb. Nada Begum was laid to uh, rest in Lahore near the shrine of her spiritual teacher, as I mentioned earlier, Hazrat Mia Mir Rahmatullah. Like, here, something uh, is uh, a type of interesting story which I'm going to add. And according to some historians, her tombs and Hazrat Mia Mir uh, tomb construction had started during the life of Dara Shiko, but was completed during the time of Aurangzeb. Located in Dharampur, as I mentioned earlier, between the Walled City and Cantonment, Walled City is a few miles from uh, uh, this place. The tomb of Nada Begum sits on top of a platform in the middle of a vast ground. The ground was once said to be a pawn during Mughal times. 
but sadly it was dismantled during the British era. Many of the bricks were used in the construction of the cantonment during the British terms or British yeah, Raj. Department must that being said, uh, the it, tomb structure uh, is quite different from most other famous Mughal tombs in Pakistan. Usually a Mughal tomb is surrounded by a char bag, a garden that represents the garden of a heaven. But Nata Begum final resting place sits on top of a platform in the middle of a man-made lake. Joined to the land by a causeway, the tomb might have looked like it was floating on water when there was a pond around it. A tomb is constructed in the form of a two-story baradari, which in English means 12-door pavilion, with arched gateways on either side of the tomb, one covered in glazed tiles with precious stones. It now has a featureless facade, which is testimony to the plunder it has seen through the history. It was first desecrated under the regime of Ranjit Singh, who was the worst enemy of Mughals, who took away precious stones that were once a part of the building's facade. Today, the building's insides are covered with graphite of various kinds. Although the monument was declared a protected site in 1956, not much has been done. Not much has been done to protect it. The only thing preserved is the marble of the princess, which has Quranic scripture carved on it in nostalgic script. The actual grave, though, is in the basement of the tomb. This is only a sign. The original grave is under uh, underground. There are stairs to go down, but those stairs were closed. The way that uh, used to go down was closed during the British Raj, during the British time. Today, the grounds around the tomb are used as a park where cricket matches take place on the weekend. A famous cricketer allegedly proposed to destroy the tomb and constructing a proper cricket ground there, but that never happened. Instead, the tomb of the tragic princess sits in its, pre in its precarious position, waiting to be restored to its former glory. Nata Begum spent uh, many a blissful year with her husband, but this bliss was not long lasting. The wars of succession started that who is going to be the king, who is going to sit on the throne, who is going to take uh, the control over, who is going, uh, going to take over the control, I mean. Tashiko was running from pillar to post to gather enough support to get control of the empire. And his wife was uh, by his side during all his wanderings. She could almost foresee the fate of her husband and sons at the hand of Aurangzeb. Luckily, she passed away before her worst fears came true, and she was spared the agony of witnessing the horrible end of her beloved family. Monvi Zakaula Dehelvi gave a detailed account of Nadra Begum's death. In his book, Tariq -e Hindustan, The History of Hindustan, and established that she passed because of dysentery in an area between Sindh and Balochistan and was buried in Lahore as per her wish. As I mentioned earlier, that she wanted to get buried in Hindustan. When he reached the banks of Sindh, his companion Firoz Mawati, who had remained by his side even in adversity, witnessing his continued Misfortune deserted him and went to the capital. Then Dara Shikho entered the territory of Jad Diwan, family of Jad Khan. The dwellers of the uh, desert intercepted him. He had some soldiers after some effort and skirmishes. Finally, he got rid of the interceptors. From where he went to the area of the Bangash. Mirza Bakshi, who was the head of this tribe, greeted him. He took him home with honor and showed him great hospitality.
He advised him to go to Iran and, and respectfully said that I would give you a guide. Gandhar is at the distance of just 12 months old. He made utmost effort to convince him and tried to pursue him, but Tashiko refused and he wanted to gain hold of control and pelt as he paid no heed to the words of Mirza Bakshi. He decided to depart for the estate of Dandar, which was under the control of the landlord Malik Jeevan. He was indebted to Darashiko. He claimed to be his loyal servant and used to send him messages. When he reached the borders of the of this landlord, Malik Jeevan welcomed him. This ungrateful personality uh, took him home and got ready to accommodate him. It is a coincidence that during these three to four days, Dashiko's wife, Nada Begum, daughter of Sultan Parvez, passed away due to dysentery. As I mentioned earlier, that she passed away in the area between Sindh and Balochistan. The love between these two was legendary. She died of the anguish that was the result of the witnessing her father's, her sorry, her husband's sufferings. The husband had to bear one grief and misery after another. The wife had specifically asked to be buried in Hindustan, so that she could send her body to Lahore to be buried under uh, his spiritual mentor, Hazamiya Mir. As I mentioned earlier, this as well, he was in destitute state and made the mistake of sending Gul Muhammad, who was a sincere, caring friend, a capable soldier, and moreover, did not want to leave his side, along with 70 men to accompany the coffin. He also sent Khwaja Makul with them, whose company was required in those dire times. Dashiko himself stayed back with some servants and useless eunuchs. On top of this, the calamity was that he thought it prudent to take Malik Jeevan as a guide and taking some provisions, he left for Iran via Kandahar. Her death drew Dashiko into such a frantic state of grief that his own fate appeared a matter of indifference to him. Uh, uh, generally the Mughals now coming to the uh, architect. Before architect, one thing I would like to tell you a little more. This is a shrine of another river, Saint Hazrat uh, Baba. Uh, Bahari Shah, which is uh, known as Darbar Baba Bahari Shah, Dara Shikos and Nada Begum devotion with Adam Mir Mir is recognized to this day, and that is why even today Nada Begum tomb is known as uh, Baradari of Adam Mir Mir Rahmatullah. Generally, the Mughals, as I mentioned earlier, the Mughals uh, tombs were built in the center of the garden, but Nada Begum tomb. Uh, had a pond around it. The roof along with the arches and location gave this building an appearance of pavilion instead of a traditional Mughal tomb. This is written by L Lucy Peck in her book Lahore, uh, the architectural heritage, page number 200. Uh, and she writes it in this way, this quiet building once stood in the center of a large lake and was approached from the east along a causeway. Curiously, despite its original condition, a renovation uh, included the creation of a char park garden, layout around the tomb, the pavilion follows the common ha uh, hashed behisht plan of a large central chamber surrounded by eight interlinking chambers on two floors around it. 
The interior has some arch netting on some of the walls and extensive areas of painted plaster in the central chamber. It is pertinent to mention here that in Mughal era the word pond was synonymous with a small lake. It was interlinked to a small lake. Again I repeat that in, uh, in the Mughal era the word pond was synonymous with a small lake. Along with the uh, tomb there is a baradari. The same architecture is found in the tomb of Sher Shah Suri and Hiram Minar that was erected by Jahangir in Shekhupura. Nada Begum was also a matchless and exceptional building. Nada Begum's tomb was also a matchless and exceptional building of its time. The construction of this building and other Miyamis shrines started during the life of Darashiko. Both the buildings were completed by the Aurangzeb. After the heart rending deaths of Nada Begum and Dashiko. Tanhaya Lal, in his book Miyame, writes uh, Since Prince Dashiko was a discipline of Miyame, meaning he was devoted to Sheikh Muhammad, known as Mullah Shah, he provided a vast quantity of valuable stone and other building material. First, he constructed the shrine of his spiritual guide in the boundary of which Hazrat Miami's place is now situated and Maharaja Ranji Singh string stripped the tomb of its expensive stones then he laid the foundation of this magnificent building. During this time revolution in the empire came to be uh, uh, during this time the revolution in the empire came to be King Shah Jahan was imprisoned by Aurangzeb. Darashiko was murdered. And something uh, what makes me uh, astonish is that that this Baradari, which is known as uh, Baradari Nadra Begum, and which also has a grave uh, indefinitely that of Nada Begum, who was Sultan Parve's daughter and Jangir's granddaughter. But this is neither the Nada Begum whose name is found in the history of Lahore, nor was his building constructed by Darashiko. Since Darashiko had started the construction of number of buildings in the compound of Hadam Yamir Rahmatullahi. During his rise to power, these were left incomplete due to his decline and death. It was in those days that the body of Nada Begum also came to be buried in Lahore. And since most books also prove that Alamgir later on completed the unfinished buildings of this compound, so this assumption seems to be true that Paradari of Nada Begum and the adjoining pond and causeway were also completed by Alamgir's orders. So guys, the recording of Nada Tom, Nada Begum Tom ends over here and now heading towards Hazar Miyami Rahmatullahi Tom. Guys entered into Hazar Miyami uh, Tom. Due to security reasons, the recording is not allowed. So I'll try to record whatever I can, whatever I can to share with you guys. Basically, Hazrat Miyamir is a sem uh, was a Muslim scholar and a Sufi. This shrine is one of the most celebrated in Lahore and has historically been revered by both the Muslims and Sikh community. Sikh too have a great affection for Hazrat Miyamir Rahmatullah. Hazrat Miyamir had a wish to be buried. Uh, next to his longtime friend Sayyid Muhammad Matha Shah Gilani, the tomb was built on the orders of Tar Shiko and the construction was completed in 1640. Tar Shiko had previously built a shrine dedicated to Mullah Shah but intended for the shrine of Miami to more superb. After the death of uh, Tar Shiko, the Mughal emperor 
Aurangzeb used much of the material collected by Dara Shiko for the construction of Hazar Miami tomb and instead used those materials in the construction of Lahore's grand uh, Bashahi Mosque. The shrine was embellished by the use of precious stones which were all removed by the Sikh emperor Raja Ranjit Singh in the 19th century to embellish the golden temple in Amritsar. Singh, however, I mean Raja Ranjit Singh, however, had the interior of the shrine painted with floral patterns. Though a pilgrim to the shrine, Raja Ranjit Singh also plundered the shrine of its marble for use in construction of his Paradari at the Hazuri Bagh near the Pashahi Mosque and the Lahore Fort. The tomb is enclosed by a rectangular structure topped by a dome made of grey granite with eaves overhanging the structure known as Khaja. The entire tomb is built upon a raised square plinth made of white marble that matches 54 feet on each edge. The tomb is surrounded by a courtyard made of red sandstone. The tomb itself is accessible from the courtyard by a set of steps made of white marbles. The tomb is located in the center of quadrangle matching 200 feet on each side. The, quad, the quadrangle is enclosed by high walls containing numerous small cells that form a cluster around the tomb of the south, of the south and east side of the complex that were used by the rich and pilgrims. The western portion of the complex is defined by a mosque constructed of pink sandstone with five short domes are atop it. A pink sandstone gateway leads to the shrine with a couplet in Persian over the entrance reading Miami, the title page of devotees, the earth of whose door is as luminous as the philosopher's stone took his way to the eternal city when he was weary of this atop of sorrow. As I mentioned earlier, that the Darashiko and his wife Nadar Begum were devotees of Hazar Miami Rahmatullah. But the historian says that the tomb is not real as per the desires or desire of Darashiko. Because the stone that were purchased by Darashiko for the construction of the tomb of Hazar Miami were used in the construction of Pachahi Mosque, to which I don't. Agree. I do not agree. Okay, now coming to another point that during the time of uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the tomb was completely repaired and renovated. The Maharaja used to attend the fair yearly, making large contributions. The fair is still held every year and it is no it is now with the Okaf. Miamir is highly respected by the Sikh people. He was a man who had no cruel intentions against any religion and he had a great love for Guru Nanak's institution. He traveled often to Amritsar to meet with Guru Arjan Dev Ji. In turn, whenever Guru Arjan Dev Ji used to visit to Lahore, he would prefer to meet Hazar Miyami Rahmatullah Guru Arjan, the fifth Sikh Guru, often visited Lahore, the birthplace of his father, the fourth Guru, Guru Ramdas, to meet his relatives. On the one of uh, such visit, he called on Hazar Miyami. The two men of God met and became long life friends. Hazar Miyamir, I was 13 years older than Guru Arjun. Guru Arjun was responsible for the construction of many tanks and buildings. 
1958, he decided, he planned to build a temple in the center of the holy tank uh, called Amritsar or the Pool of the Nectar. As the temple was to be thrown open to the people of all castes, creed, and clan, he invited Miami to lay the foundation stone of the Harbandar Sahib. When Hazrat Miami came to the city, he was wearing a long cloak made of uh, patches of coarse wool and a cone shaped cap with a rose flower on top. Miami was given one of the warm welcome for which Guru Arjun was famous. The two holy men embraced each other in sincere love and regard. The purpose of the temple was disclosed to the Sufi saint. Hazrat Miami was delighted to the fine, defined objectives the Guru had in mind. The foundation was laid. Hymens was sang in praise of God and sweets were distributed among the audience. In 1606, the, the Guru Arjun was charged by Jahangir, Mughal Emperor, the supporting ping, Prince Khusru, his son in struggle for the prince for the Mughal throne. Uh, Akbar had designated his grandson as his preferred choice as his son Jahangir was given to the heavy use of alcohol and opium, uh, to which I don't agree. Guru Arjun was imprisoned in Lahore and tortured when Miamir Rahmatullah heard about him, he came to see him. He found Guru uh, Arjun Ram Sahab uh, calm, having completely resigned himself to the will of the court. Miami suggested to Guru whether he should intercede with Emperor Jahangir on his behalf. The Guru forbade him, saying that God's will must have its course unchecked as it was not proper to interfere with his workings. He asked only for the blessings of Azamiya Mir Rahmatullah for his son Har Gobind. A couple of years after the death of Arjun, Arjun, Guru Arjun, his son and successor Guru Har Gobind, a lad of 13, uh, called on Azamiya Mir at Lahore. Guru Teg Bahadur uh, son of Guru Har Gobind and the ninth Guru as a child met Hazrat Miami Rahmatullah who blessed him. Here, uh, when I speak about myself, uh, on my uh, what I have researched on Hazrat Miami Rahmatullah, that he was not only a Sufi saint, he was a religious scholar as well. He preached about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the people. Many people became Muslim. Sikh people were inspired from the way he used to uh, preach. He used to uh, give a message of love, harmony, care. Still today, you'll find Sikh people visiting his shrine paying high respect to, to him. So guys, I'm here at Hanif uh, Plaza shop. To so guys, come over don't here, buy the uh, sheets from the here that's used inside the shrine. Canada, USA, Europe. You can come here and buy the sheets from here that you can come here and buy I'm here at Hanif Flash uh, Shop. Hanif in Tanka. Hanif, what's your name? Sheet from here, which is the name of the Tarka. Hanif Flash and Sweet Chadar Shop. The distribution among the people. The Tarbar is very good. Hanif, hi. Hi, this is Lake. Or under Lake Jai. I'm not promoting him, just I was going to meet him. In the shop. So he shot me sway. So I said, okay, I will show you your shop to the entire world. So guys, the documentary end here. I could not record everything inside the Miami tomb, though there was a mosque as well. 
So I'll try to record it some other time. But uh, for now, uh, today I couldn't do it. So see you at some other location very soon. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Goodbye. Take care of yourself and your loved ones.